It's hard to believe it took 10 years, but this landmark bill will ensure that the federal government can assist states and localities now to investigate and prosecute hate crimes throughout the United States. But it's not enough to pass a law. We've got to provide the resources to enforce it. And we have to work to change a culture, mind you, that still tolerates discrimination. A clear example is the fact that the United States still does not have a national law to prohibit workplace discrimination against LGBT individuals. While some states have enacted workplace protections and many forward-thinking and responsible businesses have adopted inclusive non-discrimination laws and policies, we need a national law to protect everyone. So we've got to make some noise and demand to be heard. In Congress, I'm working with my colleagues to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act to fully protect LGBT people from being fired, from being denied a promotion, or who are experiencing harassment on the job. We've got to get this bill passed. It's really a sad comment on our society in the United States that over 40 years after the Stonewall riots marked the launch of the gay rights movement that we still don't have these basic protections. I mean, you know, 40 years, basic protections, equal justice under the law, it's, it's mind boggling. Beyond these individual protections, we're still struggling to get legal recognition of LGBT relationships and prevent the many consequences that can occur oftentimes. Whether it's splitting families through our immigration policies, denying domestic and tax benefits to partners, prohibiting family and medical leave for LGBT community couples, or something as basic as being able to visit a loved one while they are in the hospital. Legal recognition underlies all of them. Earlier this year, our president moved forward to protect the visitation and health care disparity rights of LGBT couples by issuing an executive order and requiring hospitals to respect their rights. But perhaps the most compelling step that has been taken in recent weeks to recognize legal protection for LGBT couples came in a recent, you may have heard of the court decision in Massachusetts two weeks ago. The judge in that case found that this so-called Defense of Marriage Act, which prohibits federal recognition of same-sex marriages, was unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. <laughs> unconstitutional. So my own state of California better get with the program <laughs> pretty fast. <laughs> they got to get with the program. And, and I, I staunchly oppose, you may have heard of Proposition 8. Uh, that was a terrible thing that happened and so we had to work very hard and still now we have to make sure that the legal process moves forward and that Massachusetts sets the stage for the rest of the country. So this is really a first step in the long process to provide true equality to same-sex couples in the United States. The Congress can, significant speed up, can significantly speed up this effort if we pass the Respect for Marriage Act, which repeals DOMA. We've got to pass that bill to get the Defense of Marriage Act off of the books. So I truly believe that this really is the next frontier in our fight for equal rights and equal justice in the United States. But we need all of your help. This is an international struggle, and your activism will help break these barriers. Uh, your participation in this conference, uh, your voices uh, will be heard uh, if you make a lot of noise, and, and I mean a lot of noise. <laughs> the, we have to hear you loud and clear this week. Uh, clearly. Uh, in the United States, we've done much, but we still have a lot more to do to ensure that LGBT people are fully and equitably able to exercise their basic human rights. Our challenge over the next two years is to try and address each of these issues as we look forward to the return, finally, of the International AIDS Conference to the United States, which will be held in Washington, D.C. in 2012. <laughs> finally. Finally, we worked very hard to repeal that travel ban. Most said, no, you can't do that, Barbara. I said, yes, we can, and <laughs> yes, we did. I said, and if we do, we want 
the conference to come back to the United States. So I hope all of you will come to Washington, D.C. And of course, Oakland, California. We're going to do something in Oakland before the conference. So come to, come to Oakland before you go to Washington. So I also just have to applaud um, President Obama for developing and releasing a new national aid strategy last week. But uh, let me just say, it's hard to believe that um, we have not been targeting resources to populations of greatest need. You know, it's hard to believe that, but we haven't done that. And so I'm glad to hear finally this affirmative statement from the administration that we will, that we will. So even though it was shocking, <laughs> I, it was shocking, but it was the sad, it's the sad reality. So this is a big deal to hear the President of the United States and a country say that, yes, we will. Uh, it's a positive sign, and it really shows the determination of our President uh, to stop the insidious spread of this disease. So as a member of Congress, I'm going to continue to fight for the necessary resources to address the urgent needs and ensure that this new strategy gets implemented quickly and effectively, and that in fact the MSM community is not discriminated in any new bills or new proposals or new funding, and we're gonna be very strong advocates for inclusion so that there is some equal justice and some full participation in any of our policies that are coming forward. The only way that we can win the struggle for human rights is to make, as I said, some more noise uh, the noise has to be loud enough to be heard. And this really does depend on all of you here today. So thank you for being on the front lines. Thank you for waging such a valiant struggle. Thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today. Uh, I'll see you in Oakland and then in Washington, D.C. And thanks again for inviting me.